that can only hinder me right now because it's changing me. Um, usually when I do paint, like digital painting and stuff, I just stick with the, the basic pencils they have there, um, or tools. If I'm doing it in Photoshop, it's, it's just your basic brush. I don't really have, uh, I don't really use too many other brushes. Yeah, but you don't really have to. So like, let's say, let's see, I remember, what is it? Ears, shoulders, facial hair, and all that fun stuff. All right. All right, so let's just get our basic structure going, right? We have the eyes, nose, mouth, Ears are always the same height as the nose, right? Um, we're going for idealized proportions here. Obviously, we can kind of do whatever, um, right? Uh, so th those are always going to be a good marker. Ears are a great marker for how the head is curving, right? And the eyes are generally going to be about halfway in between. Um, the height of the head. You always have the bridge, the eye, eyebrow, uh, which is not necessarily the hair on the eyes, but more so um, a bridge that actually sticks out a little bit, right? So when we have light that shines, it'll, it'll hit this ridge. Um, sometimes that's forgotten. And then usually in the top third or so, somewhere around here, you know, we can have, have some hair, right? Um, so for me, basic proportions as we get started down this road real quickly is about one head length, about halfway through we have the eyes, about halfway from the eyes to the chin we have, you know, the nose, and approximately halfway in between that we have lips, and between the eyes and the nose we have the ears. Right? Um, and then depending on the lighting source and stuff like that, uh, what, what the hell just happened? There you go. Um, we, our chin often casts a shadow, right? So we have a little shadow there. All right. As we get into the shoulder, um, and the neck into the shoulder, uh, and then we'll get into some of the details a little bit. We have the sternocleidomastoid, which is the big chunk of muscle that, that comes and connects into the, 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 the clavicle. And if you think about, right, um, sort of the rib, right, you have the sternum here, um, and you have the first rib in here is um, the clavicle, this, this collarbone, if you will. And it's not flat, it curves in, right? So if you, if you think about it, it's sort of the side view, right? Right, this is your, your, your rib cage. It curves in um, and it actually connects into sort of the, 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 the shoulder bone here, right? Into the humerus, into that joint. Um, don't have to know exactly how it goes in, but it helps create a little bit of that socket joint. So. It, one of the things to remember is that it's not, things are not flat. We're drawing on a flat um, surface here, but it actually goes in, right? So, um, and it helps create um, this this sort of uh, shoulder muscle up here, right? The, the trapezius kind of helps form some of that. Um, and with the sternocleidomastoid, which is here, there's another muscle that kind of comes underneath. And generally, right around here, you'll get a little triangle, right? Um, that, that's one of the key markers in your neck. Um, you'll have the muscles kind of coming out underneath, right? And the muscle coming over, uh, which is the neck muscle to help turn the neck and everything. One of the things to know about the muscles, if you get into the biology of the muscles and everything like that, is that muscles only contract, right? They only squeeze. Um, 
So what happens if we turn our head to the side, right? This is one of the muscles that tightens and squeezes, right? So this, or actually this muscle would squeeze and this gets shorter and this would relax. And so it's, it's muscles only put pull, right? Um, so it's, that's how you can gauge what flexes and what not, what doesn't, right? And so this is gonna be useful as we get into the shoulders and the biceps, right? Um, so if they, they always work in pairs, if you have, a, you have your, your, your bicep here, right? You have this long muscle here, you have your um, tricep behind it. If the tricep is flexed and it's big and it's pulling, right? It's pulling this um, to, to straighten out. Um, then the bicep is thin. It, it doesn't bulge and become its own its own muscle, right? You don't you don't have both sides of this becoming um, large. That looked around. Looks like the guy from Classic Wolfenstein that looked around at the bottom of the screen while shooting Nazis. Anyone else moving their head to the description? I feel educated. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Um, so if the if you if the muscle is flexing here, right? Let's say you have a big bicep and it's flexing and it's pulling the arm up, right? Because it connects um, the humerus to the ulna uh, or the radius. Uh, then the tricep behind it is actually skinnier. Right? It's flatter because it's relaxed. Uh, but anyway, let's let's get back to the shoulders here. Um, so we, we, we have our humerus, and we so if you imagine sort of the, the rib cage that's happening here, right? We have our sternum. We have a couple ribs that connect to the sternum. I don't remember how many. You have a couple ribs that kind of come close at the bottom, right? So you have your rib cage here. Muscles have an insertion point to muscles have an insertion point to one bone, right? As as sort of the origin, um, as sort of the, the fixator, and it connects to another bone. A muscle will never connect to the same bone because then if it contracts, nothing happens, <laughs> right? You can't, the bone's not gonna move. So knowing that, that helps us put, you know, purpose to some of these muscles and what's going on, right? Um, for instance, this bicep, right? If we have our humerus, which is our upper arm bone, and we have two, um, we have our ulna down here, and we have these two bones here, the bicep connects right, to this bone down here, and it anchors to the humerus, right, this bone. So when it, when it relaxes, our arm falls down, right, and it can go down and it stays flat, but when it flexes, right, it pulls our arm up, okay? So let's think about our chest muscles now. What do our chest muscles do? They insert into our sternum, Right, so our sternum is a solid bone, um, and our chest muscles actually go into this bone, the sternum. Right, it provides the anchor, and it connects into our uh, our upper arm bone here. Right, this is our humerus. It's our, it's the funniest bone in the world. You don't have to memorize this stuff. Like, if yeah, don't don't ask how I know this stuff. Um, this is humerus, uh, but this muscle connects into the humerus and connects our sternum here. And so, when this muscle contracts, what happens? Well, it pulls our arm in. Right? It's responsible for that. So it kind of goes there, okay? Um, so we can see as we create our chest muscles, the purpose of those chest muscles and where our sternum is, is, is the point. Uh, interesting side note, if you cut up a chicken, <laughs> right? If you've gone and had chicken breast, you'll notice that the bone of the chicken here, 
right? That that middle, um, the analogous bone to the sternum that we have, they have this large keel for the muscles to all connect to, right? But for a chicken, it's it's flexible. Um, it's it's mostly cartilage, right? And so that's actually not good for them because this, this bone for a chicken, um, since it's so flexible, it's hard for them to flap. So that's why chickens don't fly. If you look at birds that are known for flying, their sternum is thick, it's bony, it provides a very good um, anchor point for their flying muscles where they flap their wings, right? Anyway, side note, again, thinking about how form follows function. So if you overlay this and you try to think about, hey, what, what else do I need my shoulders to do and my arms to do? And this is where you get some of the, the, the deltoids and stuff like that. Um, you know, and they connect to, right, the clavicle, which, which wraps around into, right, um, our shoulder. It goes back up here. And then we have our, this mass of muscle that connects just over the joint into, and it inserts and it anchors in there. And it, and it connects to the humerus, right? So what does it do? When it contracts, it raises our arm. And we, we're able to go like that, right? So we go like this, do a little karate kid thing and all that other fun stuff. So that's when it contracts, that's what's going on. So it's not just a, you know, we, we think of it as sometimes when we draw it and it gets stylized, we're just like, oh, here's a head. Um, actually, let's let's do another layer. You know, we think of it, oh, here, here, here's our head, right, neck, and we have, oh, there is this muscle here. <laughs> oh, we have this, we, we put it together like jigsaw pieces, right? We go, oh, okay, there's this and there's this. And then we wonder why it looks like we're drawing a, an action figure, right? I call it action figure drawings, where it looks like this arm can detach, right? From, right, from this, this body that we have here, which is attached to this arm that's over here. It's, it's like plug and play. Um, when in reality, those muscles, right, really just, um, They, they, they have to, they overlap, they insert, they cross the joints. Muscles cross over these joints, right? There's tendons and ligaments extend where the muscles connect to, right? So you have a, you, the, the bicep, for instance, you're like, wait, I don't feel my bicep all the way into my elbow, but that's where they have those long tendons and ligaments, right? And it's actually this thing that just contracts into a tighter ball and it pulls the, the, the ligaments up. But the mass, the, the mass of the volume, I should say, of the muscle uh, stays, should stay pretty consistent, right? It doesn't go from a, a thin, long muscle to a super big one instantly, right? So if you learn, think about it that way, and we have in these deltoids a couple different muscles so that we can rotate our arm because they only pull, right? They only contract, they don't push. So if we wanna move our arms forward and cross them in front of us, that's using our, our chest muscles, our pectoralis. And if we're moving them backwards, we're using our back muscles which are contracting and our chest muscles would relax, right? Um, <laughs> this is why I have a medical anatomy book in the house because I will not remember. You don't have to remember. I, I would. I might have mentioned it on here before, but I was pre-med. I was going to go to med school, so I, I remember a lot of this stuff. I know a lot of this biology stuff so, because I was actually studying it for a couple of years um, in college and and even after college for a while, right? So that's, that's how I know it. It's not necessary. You, you just kind of need to call it an arm bone and a leg bone. Um, <laughs> the arm bone can't do the elbow. So that's why you press weight stuff inwards to train the pecs. Yep, exactly. So you want your pecs 
And think of it as well, you, you bench press, right? If you bench press, you are bringing this arm forward, right? You can see that, right? So you, you bench press and you bring that arm forward. Let's move you over there so you can see me, right? And so bench people who bench press, they want to get those nice pecs up front. You're doing that motion. You don't have to do it all the way up, you know, open wide and stuff like that. Um, and so you have these striations of different muscles that are pulling at slightly different angles to get the full range of motion. Biology class, but now I'm actually paying attention. <laughs> there you go, Chev. Knows all the integral parts is important to remembering the shape you're rendering when you draw. Not that you have to take biology class. Tony's a man of many, many talents. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Um, right? And so, once you understand how the muscles work, uh, at least for me, once I understood like, oh, the muscles work this way, they they cross over the joints. They come back, you know, they're not distinct shapes. They, they, they sneak under, they go over, they, they, the, the biceps come out from here, right? And they, they, there's a couple of different things out into the bone and they, they connect down. They sneak out from under here for the triceps and stuff like that, right? Um, and the, the ribs that are actually over here and you want to get these nice wings that actually, you know, pull into, you, you got to do these like little flappy chicken wing kind of moves if you really want these serratus muscles to be, um, you know, legitimate <laughs> off to the side. And your diaphragm, right, that shape is caused by your rib cage. Your rib cage creates this little shape here that we all shorthand and we toss in our six pack right there. It's however good to know the terms communicate with the alien art species that insist on communicating nothing else but weird Latin terms. Bye, Nil and Daisy. Hope this was, uh, hope this was helpful. Thank you for coming and watching. Um, all right, so. Uh, Zizo, uh, so maybe that will help. Um, uh, you can, you know, knowing what's going on behind it might help you like think through and understand how to observe when you see these muscles, like, oh, that muscle is actually doing this. That purpose, you know, it's, it's got a, you know, it's kind of allowing me to, you know, move my arm at this weird angle. That's where the keg, yeah, right? This is, this is, this is the beer belly. The one pack. Right? And then you learn where, where, where the fat stores generally happen and stuff like that, right? Um, the shoulder, the back muscles, oh, okay, 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 okay. So let's go to the back muscles. So you have your skull, if you if you look at your skull, right? You have Right, so you have the skull, you have your bones kinda come out here. Um, you're gonna have some muscles off the back of the neck, right? That are gonna wanna pull it um, so that you can do all sorts of, you know, pull it back and all that other fun stuff. Right? So um, there, there's an insertion point at the back of the skull. You know, once you hit the, the bony part of your skull up here, there's, there's no muscle over here, right? It doesn't reach that high. So all of the muscles connect right at the bottom into the skull, and that's their insertion point. Um, and let's just draw that spine as it works its way down. Um, one second here.
All right, we have... We have generally this shape. We have that shape. Um, we have more insertion points here. So in general, on my the back muscles, I I, I start to uh, um, lose. I, I forget some of the names of these muscles. Um, generally, you're, they're they're pretty symmetrical. You have uh, sort of you end up finding this M, right? There's this M that appears in the back of your muscles. Hey, Pamada, how are you? How's it going, Pam? <laughs> Pam, you missed it. He was teaching us how to do a one-pack. I remember seeing something on Facebook about how an artist was trying to draw a muscular man's back without thinking. Typed muscular men bare back into Google. Now I'm just giggling like an idiot. I was jimming. Ah, oh, one of those. All right. And once you spot that M, um, that's, that's kind of... Um, a, a good foundation, um, my marker, so to speak. So for me, it, kind of doing the back, we have to remember it, it kind of falls, goes in, right? So we have a back here. Um, there's that natural curve and stuff like that. Right, so you have your ribs that are going here and you have your spine that, that kind of falls in the back in this crease here. So you, we have this sort of T-shape or this V-shape that falls in here. Um, so again, if we think about the muscles and the fact that they, they, they kind of pull, um, this, this is gonna allow us to like lean back and pull back here. This, we have some, um, the neck muscles that are gonna be going into the spine and into the scapula and, and stuff like that. Um, and also some of the shoulder muscles are going to connect into there as well, right? It helps provide some of that. So there's that mass um, and you have sort of this hour, hour, hourglass shape with um, the sets of muscles in the back, right? So you can have these wings off there. The shoulder blades are going to be about the same size as you have um, the the uh, deltoids and stuff like that. And then out of that, you're going to get your your sort of triceps as they come through, right? And your elbows, right? This is your ulna and your radius, and then you have a bunch of a bunch of other hand muscles. That I'm not even going to bother trying to talk about what those are. But for me, as I approach the back, I try to find my M, right? I try to find this uh, T that composes that bottom part, and I just break out some of those uh, lower shapes, right? But are the rhomboids showing when the arm is stretched forward? Um. Boy, you're asking the anatomical questions, aren't you, Zizo? Um, uh, Ram <laughs> so, I, I have my brother in the background who, who, who's in med school, and he says the rhomboids are pretty deep, and so therefore probably won't be showing. All right? Ears back here. There you go. So hopefully that helps. And then as you add shadows into this, because the back kind of curves in and then back out, 
all of this area down here is generally in shadows because we have a light source coming from the top, right? Right. So all this stuff here generally is in the shadows and then it comes back out. When it comes back out here, the light then can hit some of this lower back, right? So the light really hits this top area. This would be your mid-tone, right? As, as it's going to, so it's, light's going to be hitting there and there and there. It's going to kind of hit this area. It's going to miss this area down here because your natural curve of the back and stuff like that, right? And then it'll hit this lower area. And so we can imagine what some of the shadows that are formed are going to look like. Hey, Known Daisy, welcome back. <laughs> LOL, thanks Tony's brother. Is there a reason you're showing a somewhat masculine form versus a feminine form? No, it's the same thing. Um, you, we can... Uh... Uh, the, the shoulders are not going to be as wide, so the M is not going to be is going to be more sort of a, a, acute, if you will. Right, so it's going to be more more narrow, but we're still going to have some of those same same shapes. Right. Um. insertions there you have this the lower lower back of it and then we have the the butt right those gluteus maximuses that kind of kind of do that we'll give some earrings right and again the same thing We'll shade this middle area. This is where your shadows are going to be in the, in the back in general, right? Um, as it comes back out, come, we, we, we get some of the light source at the very bottom again. Um, we get mid-tones up here. Should have studied harder in chemistry class and gone to med school too. <laughs> hey, hypnotic! Oh my God, it's been so long. Just drop by and say hi. Great, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for dropping by, hypnotic. We'll catch up soon sometime, man. Hope everything is good with you. Aloha. I appreciate the butt. Yeah, we'll we'll be, we'll be equal opportunity. We'll, we'll give the guy butt too. that I do not discriminate butts they're all glorious right um, how's that I've been okay now learning back anatomy Tony my picture in QA See what's going on. Hmm. 
My picture in QA, what does that mean, your picture in QA? I didn't want a different stream. Did you put something? I didn't. Questions and answers, you have a picture in there. Is this the runway? Matt. So. <laughs> uh, is this triangular indentation? Is that the rhomboid? No, it's probably the subscapularis. Um, my brother says it's probably the subscapularis. Or is it the infraspinatus? It's part of the scapula, basically. It's part of the scapula, he says. So this was the question in QA. Um, this was, uh, I think that's the infraspinatus. Pretty sure that's the infraspinatus. Yeah. Infraspinatus? Yeah. Right. It's a muscle on part of the scapula, underneath the spine of the scapula that connects to the head of the humerus. So this is the picture that Zizo posted. Um, say that one more time, Matt. Say that one more time, what that was? That's the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus. Infraspinatus? Yes, the infraspinatus. Yes. Brother knowledge hype. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is what he says. Um, I am probably not going to be on too long, Miss, Mr. Hypnotic. Um, I just noticed the butt. Um, we're going to do one more quick thing. Uh, we're going to talk about facial hair, right? Um, but yeah, I'm going to be taking off and trying to grab some dinner soon. So probably about another 15 minutes or so, and then we'll take off. Um, so real quick as people are bugging me. All right, so if we, let's, no, we, we have a, Nice generic manly face here. I'm mean, talking about drawing. Right. Um, the ear here, right, is, is gonna be about the same as uh, the size of the nose. Um, right, so. Um, typically you want to think about also where, where, where the light source is, um, the, the, the hair, uh, you'll see more hair on the side. Um, you can actually, actually use white if you want to get it, but usually it's just, you just have to hint at it. You don't have to draw every single, um, hair if you're just trying to get stubble. Uh, but what you'll notice is that there are certain patterns that appear, right? And you just have to, you know, there, there's usually a little... Um, like goatee kind of a thing here, you know, draw those lines. And usually the nice, nice part as well is that they come out and stick out of the profile, right? So they don't all stay inside, but you can, you can, you know, tweak the edges of it a little bit. You want a little stubble here, you just kind of stick them out there, right? Um, and again, you don't have to overdo it. You can just kind of hint, hint at it. Uh, 
hint at it and then you'll, you'll get some of that, right? Um, as you get into more, I'm just gonna build up on this, as you get into like, let's say, mustaches and stuff like that, right? That usually covers most of, um, you can talk about creating, um, the same thing as hair, it creates tresses of hair. It usually it covers the upper lip, right? It covers the full upper lip, so really only you see underneath is the beginning of that bottom lip, right? And so, boom, you got a little mustache there, right? And even that, it'll start casting a shadow as well, so you can, the, so the area underneath it will usually be um, a little heavier and a little darker. All right, take care, hypnotic. Like Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist, All right? Yeah, so you have, uh, there you have this guy here, All right? Um, don't forget as well, some we, we can get some stubble into the neck as well as you kind of do it. Um, what else? I don't know, do you have any specific question? <laughs> Surprise, mustache out of nowhere. Uh, usually mustache kind of, when I, when I draw it, it kind of comes out of the nose a little bit. <laughs> um, but that, that's just me, every mustache is slightly different, but I usually make it come out of the nose. You can, you know, hey, we can give it a little, little personality. There you go. Um, but once you get the structure of the face, you're here, usually falls outside of that, right? So, um, that's where the hair is coming out from, and if it grows longer, it grows longer. Handlebar mustache. Does it work the same with more realistic pieces? So I just add, so I just indicate the facial hair and just naturally comes along uh well if you're drawing it i'm sketching it right now right um so that's a little bit different than actually painting it um what i'll probably have to do is just just get into it a little bit later um if you i, I don't have time to kind of do a color version of something like this but um you know the tone of the skin right generally becomes bluer um, when you have facial hair uh, so versus the tone up here in this area is generally redder, right? Your eyes, your nose, those are big areas of vascularization, your ears and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot more red of a skin tone. So you can hint at stubble and facial hair just by toning the skin itself, right? Um, your ears relatively, uh, if you're going looking directly It's kind of in like uh, three parts, right? Um, not necessarily all equidistant, but you sort. I I look at it as uh, this little flap, whatever it is. Um, you have a curve, right? That that kind of twists like a ribbon um, to create this sort of back here, uh, and you have the the lobe that kind of comes in here, right? So you just get that sort of shape. Every ear has some basic fundamental curves. First is, is this little guy. You have a little shadow here because what happens here is that we have a, um, a Y. There's this Y of, of flap of flesh, so to speak, right? And that's created by, you know, so we'll just create the shadows and and this is the eardrum that goes inside there and this comes back around and we have um, kind of squeezes, but there's this Y, it's always there. The nice part about ears, once you kind of get one down, you don't, we don't use ears to identify people. We use eyes, we use nose, we use lips. Very rarely do you look at someone's ear and like, oh, that's Sam. Um, so for me, when I draw them, all my ears pretty much look the same. Sometimes they have a lobe, sometimes they don't, right? Like right there, they don't have a lobe. 
Um, but generally, you get this Y shape, you know. Um, here's a Y, here's this, right? And boom, there's your shade, the shade, 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 done. There's my ear. Um, if you have fun, you want to go and create uh, an elf ear. I kind of do the same thing. I, I kind of create my Y, except it's larger. Uh, maybe put a little curve here. Why is perfect describe the contour of that part? So what about mapping the lighting on the planes of the face? <laughs> that's that's a that's another lesson altogether, man. That's another lesson altogether. Hi doggy! Identify an actor by the back of his legs once. Wow, you must really like those legs. I've been struggling with hairs, yeah. And so, you know, and they get flatter. So if you're just looking at it from the front, you see that flap and it kind of comes by and you kind of do that and you just kind of, boom, you have, you just kind of flatten it, right? Totally moon for drawing. So there you go, everybody. Um, I'm gonna have to quickly run and ditch. We're not gonna go and follow anyone and host anyone today, but I'm gonna need to take off um, so I can get to dinner. Kind of uh, push myself a little bit. But everybody, thank you for uh, joining today. Hope you had a good time. Um, we got some watercolors in there. Did a couple lessons in uh, drawing and anatomy and fun stuff like that. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I'm uses hell. <laughs> I mean, I had a good laugh. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for all the great lessons, Tony Plus Brother. Get some dinner later. <laughs> Take care. Um, 